Hey guys, it's Danielle here from Evelyn and Sage Avenue. I'm back with the design team project for Week of Tuesday and I'm going to be using a selection of Heather's gorgeous digitals to create these origami trees. So I hope Maria last week got you in the mood um, for paper folding crafts because I'll be continuing that this week uh, with some more origami. But honestly, it's so simple. Once you've done your first one or two folds, it's super easy. You can just kind of zone out and um, get folding and I've made quite a handful of these actually and it's just super easy to make but really effective I think these are so cute obviously you could do these in full Christmas theme like this red one here and some of my neutrals obviously got a green one I think this was in Heather's love and light kit I think um, but all the digitals I've used are list below but you can really have fun mixing and matching She's got such a huge variety of digitals. You could go for Christmas or you could really get quite modern and do some floral ones as well, which is one of my favourites too. So let's get started. You won't need many materials for this project. It's a great way to use your scraps. Um, you can do them in a variety of sizes and, and you just need your bone folder and obviously anything you've got lying around to decorate. So let's get to the folding stage first. So what you'll need to get started is to prepare your pieces of paper uh, just to create your your main two pieces so that's your bottom piece which is the larger one and the smaller tip of the tree the sizes that i've worked with is for my larger piece i've used four inches by four inches so that's to create your larger square and for the smaller one it's three inches by three inches now you can create them as big or as small as you like as long as they're even squares you should be completely fine to scale up or scale down. I did consider doing a two inch piece um, to have a three tier tree, but I folded that many trees this week that I just didn't have time to focus on folding a two inch square, but by all means, you could try that and it will create a little cute tip for your tree. If you're creating just a two tier tree like myself, you'll need five pieces for each tier. So five pieces of your four inch squares and then five pieces for your three inch squares. Patterns wise you can mix and match like I've done here just keeping the tone of the red throughout which is really fun to mix and match or like this one which is actually my favourite um, I've used just one pattern throughout so this is from Heather's wallpaper kits and I just think this really complements the tree shape it's just interesting the whole way around and i just yeah this is my favorite during this process i've made a mistake so you don't have to um i thought you needed to print on both sides but you don't you only need to print on one side so once i discovered that then i looked through all of those printables that i would had from previous projects um just scraps and off cuts i put to use in this one because you only need a small piece of paper really it's a really good option for getting through some scraps so yeah just print on one side if you are printing um new digitals out so this one for instance will be a new print because this is from heather's rosy kit which is a new kit from heather and as is this one too get into the folds i'll do this a couple of times with you and i'll try to make it as clear as possible but honestly once you've done a few it's really really simple in fact, after my first one, I'd kind of nailed it because it's it's quite easy to follow, really. Um, you do the same process with all pieces, so it's just one folding technique, and you do that for everything. I'm going to start with my larger piece, so hopefully that's a bit clearer for you. You would help if you have got a bone folder or something to smooth out your creases, because the neater your creases are, um, it'll be much easier when you come to the folding later on. I am going to do it from scratch, um, but this one I've already folded just to demonstrate where your actual lines are. So if you want to take a little screenshot of this, um, if it would help you during the folding process, then by all means. So I start with the wrong side facing up. I turn it to a diamond and then I make my first fold. So you're just joining these two corners together, folding it in half, make sure everything's nice and lined up. And just making sure that crease is really, really nice and flat. Do exactly the same with the opposite corner. So there are your first two folds. So laying it back down, you can start with either corner. But I'm going to start from my right. So you're creating a kite shape now. So you want this corner to meet this centre line. So 
so this edge here is meeting up with your center line so the corner folds in creating that kite shape like so so and then you turn it around open it back up and do exactly the same with the opposite side And once you've got the hang of it, this isn't fiddly to do at all. You kind of get into the method of spinning your paper around and knowing which folds to do next. And it's, it's quite a streamlined process. It's not really fiddly at all. So you've created two kites, one that side and one that side. So that's how it should be looking now. If you keep it diamond the whole time, it's really easy to know what to do next. What you're doing now is your two points again but you're bringing them in to meet this crossover point here. So, like so. So this point meets this crossover point here. And there you go, that's all of your folds. So you can see that those folds all match up. And it's eight folds in total, so there's not many really. Um, but that's your main construction. Now, depending on how you make, you could compartmentalise all of this. So you could do all of your sheets and then move on to the next process, which I'm about to show you. So really there's three stages, so you could do them all in separate stages. I tend to complete all three stages together. Um, that's just because I need to see like progress. <laughs> um, but if, if you find it quicker just doing it, in stages together then that's fine keeping it diamond you're pinching these two corners which should fold really nicely in now if you've done nice tight creases it should just naturally push in so you're pinching these two together and you're just pushing in and it should create your kite again so that's what it should look like now so you're pinching the corners in and it should fold into place quite nicely and then once you've done that, just fold in it half and there's your kite and then fold in it half again. So you can go either way. You could fold away from yourself or towards yourself. It really doesn't matter which way you fold at this point. I generally just fold away from myself. And then I generally just give it another go with my bone folder just to make sure everything's laying as flat as possible. So you've got half a kite shape now and then what you do is you open it up and that's what you should have and it should fold like so it's all nice and taut and in place so when you open it I just put my thumbs in there just to make sure that opens up nicely and that is your first piece to create your tree I'm going to create um, my other four just so I can piece it together with you So I've got all five of my four inch squares folded and then all we're going to do now is tuck them all together. So this is a really easy part. So you take your first two pieces and you're just popping one on top of the other. 
so you've just tucked them together to create three points rather than four make sure it's nice and tucked in nice and tight and then this middle point here you will see a, a crease here so it should fold quite nicely again it should be natural because you've already created your creases you're going to tuck that inside of itself so that's tucked in there you can see and again that crease is already there for you to follow so it'll fall into place nicely and what I do then just to make sure everything's nice and flat is I just pinch it together and press down just so everything's nice and secure and you carry on that process with your remaining three so that one would go under that one and with your middle point again you fold inside itself like so so you can see how that's already creating that curve so once you've got all five pieces tucked together you'll have your two remaining ends and then all you do is the same thing it doesn't matter which one goes on top of which so you could go on top of that or the other way around it kind of depends what pattern you want showing so i want the red showing so i'm going to tuck that on top of that same thing folding that inside itself and that is your first tier it sort of creates a star from the bottom but you see how it comes up to a point and that is your first tier so exactly the same process with your three inch squares or whichever size you've decided to go with and then that will create your smaller tier so you can see the size difference there and then your smaller tier will just sit on top like so and what I found is you can mix and match these um, size wise and obviously patterns. But for instance, if you've got some that are the same color tones, you can stack them however you like, really. So I've got two large tiers, one small tier. I could go large, small, large. So I've got a taller tree with two large and one small. These patterns won't match, but just so I can go the other way around. You could go small, large, small. That's a taller tree. I like this version a little better if I'm using three tiers. So that's two small and one large. Um, I just think it looks a little bit more natural. And you could keep that going. You could really create all your tiers and just have a play around really. So at this stage, you could leave them like this because they do balance on top of each other nicely. So if you wanted to decorate a table or your fireplace or anything like that you could just stack them up so make a bunch of them and maybe at different heights and you could just bunch them together for decoration but what i'm going to do is i've turned mine into decorations so next step also really easy so we're going to dress it up to hang on your christmas tree right now the real fun part now it's time to decorate so there's many different ways you can decorate these or as i said you can just leave them as it is but i'm going to show you how to create the hanging so you can actually hang them on a tree so it'll all just depend on how far you want to go with them and what materials you have to hand so I've just got some options for you here because I wanted to take you through how to achieve a more shabby vintage look so this is actually antique lace trims that I've kind of tore apart and you can see they're generally a little bit more delicate and frayed but I don't have um, a big stash of antique laces vintage laces I kind of used my material sparingly so what I've done is I've pulled some pieces that will still achieve that same effect so I just want to take you through what I've got here I haven't dressed all of mine yet so at the end you'll see them all completely finished so just some of the pieces I've prepped for myself here I've got some sequin trim now this is just cut very finely from sorry silk so this is all, all of these are cut down so these didn't come this thin I've cut everything down so just little bits of shine and glitz here and there so there's some twine which has got a, a shiny thread through it this is cut down for some jute ribbon that I got uh, in a Christmas bundle so just your average um, decorative ribbon really obviously this time of year this all should be readily available more or less anywhere so whether it's in card shops craft stores um, for those of you in America, the Dollar Tree will probably have things like this. So all I've done to create the finer pieces 
is I've just cut along the edge and pulled them apart and it does come apart really nicely so that's option one. Some other ribbon I've pulled apart and cut apart are these pieces so you've got a few options from just one piece of ribbon. This one was cut down from this piece again it was on a spool of Christmas decorative ribbon so you'll have loads of choice if you go to your local shops for Christmas decorations you'll have loads of choice of gift wrap ribbon and it just depends how you utilize it really. So this is too thick to wrap around my tree so by cutting it down I've given myself three delicate pieces to work with. And some more ribbon that I've cut down I haven't finished cutting this one down yet as it'll be a little bit more messy so I've just left it left it all attached for now but what I will do when I decorate mine is I'm going to cut away these very fine pieces um, to use to decorate my trees so again same thing just cutting it up and pulling it away and I've done exactly the same with a red piece here and this just creates really fine pieces to use so you're just introducing things sparingly as you don't want to use really thick ribbon like this it'll just take away from the delicateness of the tree so exactly the same principle with everything I've got here so I've cut things down from larger lace strips I've got some cheesecloth which works really nice too so cheesecloth here but I have found that if you cut cheesecloth down this fine obviously it wants to pull apart so what I've done to avoid that is you twist it if you twist it together like so it's a little bit more workable and it won't pull apart as much but that's just a shabby piece that's very similar to the antique piece of lace that I've used here so more or less the same effect. I've also pulled some metallic embroidery floss so that's also really nice to use. I've actually just used some jute twine cord whatever you want to call it uh, to create my hanging piece but any thicker embroidery floss will be completely fine. Just some other options because you could really go crazy with this. I haven't got all of my Christmas craft materials out yet so this is just what I could get my hands on. I'm sure when it gets closer to November I can start getting all my Christmas goodies out. So I've just pulled some beads to thread onto your finer pieces of twine and these have sort of got the tones of glass glitter so I thought that'd be really nice too. Just had an idea about the glass glitter. Um, you could glitter the edges of these if you wanted to so if you just added a little glue um, along these edges you could dip them in some glass glitter and that would be really lovely um, just around the edges of your tree. You could even do it down these edges too. I'm going to go and see what I can create from what I've pulled out. But your first step before you do any of the dressing would be to put your loop on. So all I'm going to do for that is use some thin twine. So for this you just need a small length uh, folded in half. So that is a little taller than my, my tree. Yeah, it's a fold in a half. You can see that's the full run of my tree and then with a little extra as well. Then all we're going to do is tie a knot sort of in the middle. So I want the knot to meet this top point when threaded through because I want the knot to catch inside of here so it doesn't pull all the way through. So about halfway down, I'd say, I'm just going to tie that together just with the regular knot and that's created a nice thick knot I've done this quite a couple of times so I generally make the knot really big it just depends how much twine you've got to work with so that's what really you should end up with you can cut this down if you like so once you've got your knot tied you want to thread it through now this is why I've I mentioned using thinner jute twine because I want to thread it through a needle just to make it easier for me to um, thread through my tree pieces. Now you can use anything for your loop. You could use um, wax thread, you could use embroidery floss, maybe a little bit of sorry silk. You can use whatever you've got to hand really but I just like the look of the jute. So I've got that threaded, so my loop threaded through my needle with my knot at the end. Now you start with your base piece and thread that through the top. So this should just thread naturally through the hole that's at the top because these pieces aren't attached together at the top. Now when you're pulling through don't pull through too roughly or hard because no matter how big the knot is it if you really pull on it it will pull through the paper. 
so I'd just be quite gentle when you're pulling it through but if you've got a big knot you can see that that's hanging there what you could also do if you're worried about the knot moving is that once you've threaded it through you could put some glue on the knot itself and then pull it through and then pinch it together until it dries which I might do for the remainder of mine um, just so I can make everything nice and secure but that's also another tip and then once that's done you repeat the process for your next tier and just make sure you pull the loop through like so and there's your loop but happy with that and again you can see even when it's shaking around that's all nice and secure there and I haven't glued it at all you could just leave it at this stage this is a perfectly lovely Christmas decoration especially obviously if you're using Heather's Digitals you've got so much gorgeous prints on there that it's just a lovely unique decoration all right guys so these are mine all finished now um I had a little bit of fun decorating these ones I've obviously got my favorites so my favorites are this one I just think it's really dainty and and girly so it's got the some of Heather's floral wallpapers on there and I think I think the green might be from Love and Light. Um, all the digitals I've used, I'll link them below. And this one I think was my next favourite. Obviously I said at the beginning that this print just works so lovely for a tree. And I love this one too, just the neutrals. Keeping them really simple and neutral, I think is more effective, well for my taste anyway, than something that's a little bit brighter. Um, but the blues work too, it just depends what your decor is or if you're gifting it to someone what their colour preferences are. But I just think they're all so pretty and just that little bit extra at the top really just brings them together. I've got the hard task of trying to photograph these now. Because <laughs> obviously you can't really lay them flat so I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. But just for instance, just using bits and pieces that you've got around. So that was um, an earring, so just the front of an earring that I've just clipped the back off. And just popped it on there and I think that's really cute. I love these neutrals of Heather. She's got so many gorgeous um, kits with neutrals. That's the monogram kit there and you might not think to use it as a pattern. But obviously once it's folded you lose the letters but still get all those lovely florals. I think as I went on decorating these I did discover that I like less is more. I can't wait to see these on my tree. And obviously because I've got so many I'll gift them out to people. But I really did like how they turned out. So hopefully that's inspired you guys to do something a little bit different for your tree this year using Heather's Digital. You've got so many digitals to choose from, you could really mix and match everything. And if you've got any questions, pop them below. As I said, all of Heather's Digitals will be listed below too. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.